Welcome to Radicards TV. This is Patrick and this is Anthony here. And we just got done shopping at Frankenstein's. It is Saturday, January 4th, 2014. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year to you and Happy New Year to you. And um, I'm going to go first. I'm going to talk about what I got and then Anthony's going to take it away with, with his purchases today. So I had an agenda today before I came. I wrote down a list of things I needed to acquire um, while I was at Frank's. Stuff I had been sort of eyeing and... Um, you know, inexpensive things that, that, that sort of have gone unnoticed for so many years. I'd seen these cards kind of just sitting in inventory for, for so long, so I figured I'd, you know, bring them home. But um, first thing I got there is, and I bought this for a reason. Uh, there's a couple reasons why, actually. I know a lot of people give uh, Sammy Sosa a lot of flack, but um, this card is actually one of, one of my favorites from the 1990. 1990 Leaf, Sammy Sosa Rookie. This is what they call Fine Nine. It's got every single um, category is a nine, so it's a nine all the way across the board. Um, it's really good. It's centering edges, circ corner surface, all nine, submit nine. I thought that was a really cool um, example, and just a good, good, good way to define a fine nine. So I picked that up for just a few bucks. It was cheap. So I did pick up a card that I had sort of seen over the last couple of years, sort of. Um, <sighs> Gosh, living in this box at this warehouse, it is, you know, there were actually a couple of them, and I just kind of gone over it so many times over the last couple of years and just passed it by, passed it by, passed it by. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it because I've given it some thought outside of shopping here. So for some reason, I just it called me to purchase it today. Now, when I bought this card, it's it was a BGS 9.5, and it had three of the four um, categories of 9.5, the centering edges, surface corners, and one of the category, categories was a nine. And then I brought this card over to another dealer that had a straight BGS 9.5 version of this card with all 9.5s. So I did straight across trade with the addition of a dollar. And you're probably wondering, well, well, show us the card. I got a 2001 Provo Angels Grandstand number 17, a Casey Kochman. Now, Anthony knows a little bit more about Casey Kochman. He's going to sort of inform us about <laughs> this guy's background a little bit, you know, how he performed, what sort of happened, and et cetera. So, Anthony, tell us a little bit about Mr. Casey Kochman here. Well, Casey Kochman's always one of those guys. He's bounced around the league recently. Okay. It's because, you know, left-handed bat, first baseman. You know, used to hit with a touch of power. But he was the uh, Angels' everyday first baseman when they made the uh, the trade for Teixeira, I think, back in 2008. So, he was on Atlanta for a couple years, bounced, went over to uh, Boston. I think he went to uh, Seattle, Cleveland one year. I think he played a couple games for Miami last year. You know, the big thing is that a lot of people talked about Casey Cochman's that his career was over and that he was done. Um, but then he kind of rejuvenated himself in 2011 with uh, Seattle, or I'm sorry, with uh, Tampa Bay. He had a uh, he had a good year. Got back in the mix. I think he picked up another big contract, one year deal. He'll be back, man. He's one of those guys. First base, left hand hitter. He'll be back. Yeah? Yeah. So you think, and I got this card for, actually, after all was said and done, I paid $6 for this this card. You think it was a good deal? What were you calling it, a fine 9? Well, this would be a fine 9.5 because all of the subcategories are 9.5s. The fine 9 that I have is my Sammy Sosa had all 9s across Oh, it. yeah, I got you. So, and I think because it costs more than $6 to have even a card graded, actually quite a bit more than $6, I think that this yeah. came at a very inexpensive, very affordable, very attractive price, kit, Heck price yeah. tag. So, again, it's just kind of going to sit in my collection now. Um, I kind of rescued it. So it's it's just funny to see that, that there were like, I don't know, three or four of them there and just people are passing them by. It's so. fun that you made the purchase and then you made a trade. I, <laughs> I made the purchase and I made the trade for even a... I, right. I came up. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Let's pick that up. And I also got a 1994 Topps traded Jason Schmidt BGS 95. This is the this is Jason Schmidt's, Schmidt's rookie. I think this might be his only rookie card actually. I he might have a 94 Stadium Club thing. I, I don't quite remember, sure. but um, a pitcher for uh, the Atlanta Braves. Oh, there he is right there. So it's kind of cool. Uh, just go ahead and get this. Like, and it was sort of in a bargain bin, so I figured I'd, I'd, I'd go ahead and grab it while I could. Here, anyway, I got those three. And then I picked up... Um, these are kind of cool. We'll save this for the last thing I talk about. 
picked up a, I'll just, the price tag is on there, that's fine. Yeah. I paid a quarter for this. This is a 71 Tops Willie Stargell. Um, hammered condition, but I figured it's, you know, Hall of Famer. The guy was a monster hitter in his day. He's he's passed away, right? Yeah, Pops is gone now. He's yeah. Pops. Um, so I figured I'd get this. This is um, not a high number, but that's okay with me. I don't anticipate it being quarter for a high number card. It does have a little hologram sticker on the back. It's it's the Who's actual, um, it's actually part of the uh, the sleeve. The penny sleeve. Oh, it's on the, the penny sleeve. Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I think those are for actual gaming cards, actually, the hologrammed ones. I picked up a... Um, 1983 uh, Superstar Sports Coins Collector Series, Pepsi Cola Rod Carew. Now, I believe these came out of 7-Eleven. Uh, I Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But this seems like one of those um, gas station releases. It's really peculiar. There's a young Rod Carew there. Here's what the back looks like. It's just a standard photo rather than... I know I've seen the kind of sport flick. Oh, yeah. Type of 7 Eleven ones before. Yeah, and this one's just your standard flat finish photograph. It's kind of classic. That's neat. Kind of cool. Now, these last two cards I found together uh, 82 Tops Jim Palmer. Okay, you're probably thinking, why'd you buy two of those? <laughs> well, when I found these, um, oh, crap. I, um, I saw this one first. And you'll see that it's it's got like, you know, some. Uh, ink, the ink is sort of fading a little bit. But you'll notice that the card itself is not faded. So here you've got the regular base card and you've got the base, base card here, but this one's got like less ink on it. I believe this is when the, the ink got low in print and this is what it produced before they refilled the uh, ink, ink cartridges. The backs of these cards too are, are, are similar in the fact that this one's darker and this one's lighter. So kind of a cool uh, pair of cards that I found here. They were very, very inexpensive. Um, might be a cool article to write on on Reddit cards. So, my day was like that's what I got today. My day was pretty, um, pretty, pretty slim, but definitely a fun time nonetheless. And uh, from here forward, Anthony's gonna go ahead and take it away. Take it away, Anthony. Again, I just picked up a bunch of stuff to get a uh, autograph, hopefully sent through the mail. Uh, the last time I came to Frank's, I picked up a three-player. I think it was a '72 tops. Um, Dick Such was on there, so I got another Dick Such. I'm gonna send that out. Um, rookie 62, Lee Stange. I think it's Stange. Stange? I, I'm not sure. Um, he was later a coach, and I have a coach's card with him on there that I'm gonna get out. I really like the way this card looks. Art Dittmer, New York Yankees. Uh, clean photo. I, I, I dig it. Um, I have a uh, 61 ERA liters, I think, uh, tops that I'm going to get out to him. Mike McCormick, just haven't gotten around to sending to him yet. Had a long career. Get that out. Another 61, Dan Dobick. Dobick, Dobick, not sure. I like these these 61s with their hats off. And I know Willie Mays was in that set with his hat off. It's pretty cool. I think it was probably easy to use these photos for guys that were traded mid-season or whatever because they don't have to... I always thought it was so ugly when they would do the little artistic, you know, blacking out of the cap or uh, or changing it to look like a different team logo. From 62s, I got a Milt Pappas. Another guy I've just been putting off for a while. Cool baseball name, Milt Pappas. Classic. Dan Duliba, Duliba. Again, I'm not sure how, how it pronounces it. Uh, never heard any of the uh, announcers talk about him or reflect back to his career, but got a couple more that I need to get out to him. I have a 53 Tops um, Bobby Chance that I'm was a bit waiting to send out, and I'm just going to throw this in there along with it. Uh, too bad you don't see his cap on this one, but he played for the, uh, the Colt 45s there. And I always like those old, different Cooperstown type caps. Another, I have a, uh, a 53 Stu Miller that I'm waiting to get out, and I'm going to throw this in there with it. Another cap off from the 62 set. Dig him. I, um... I collected big. I opened a lot of packs in 86, 87, 88, which uh, I'm sure a, a lot of guys my age did. But I didn't open any Opeechee. And the Opeechee are so fun. I, 
I love it. The bright backs. And I especially like Opeechies that have an Expo or a Blue Jay on them. Just because I know that somebody in Canada opened this up and got super excited about it. Even though he was traded, he's now with the Reds, so he's uh, wearing his, his Montreal garb, but it says Reds in the top, which was always different because tops didn't even have one at all that looked like that. I want to say something about this Opeechee card, actually Opeechee just in general, and don't quote me on this, this is kind of what I've heard around the campfire over the years, is that um, I once heard that that you'll notice, well first before I say anything, you'll notice the Opeechee edges are kind of frayed. Like a lot of the Opeechee edges, like 82 or just whenever, they're just, they've always been sort of frayed. What I've heard is that um, the Opeechee plants would buy the old cutting blades from Tops when Tops got done producing their cards and they would use them to produce Opeechee, and which is why you've got the frayed edges because you're, you're cutting paper with dull blades. Wow. So you get that frayed edge. Now don't quote me on that, I don't know this to any degree of, to certain, uh, to any, to any degree of uh, certainty, but that's just what I've heard. So that's kind of an interesting thing to think about when you're looking at these and you know uh, trying to identify why the edges are always so frayed with Opeechee cards. So kind of interesting. It is interesting. I yeah. would think that, how tough is it to, to sharpen those guys? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's probably a cost involved in this sharpening some very high-profile blades. I, uh, what else did you get? Got some good stuff. I there. grabbed just a couple other guys to send out in the mail, of course. I'm working on a uh, 59 Tiger team card that I have four or five autos on. And Frank Bowling, who I've sent to the, in the past, is a real gentleman and a great signer. And I, I don't, you know, I don't have too many from these 63 Flair. So I thought that was pretty neat. He's uh, featured in his uh, Milwaukee Brave. Uni there. 63 Fleer set's great. I love the design. The, the, the yellow uh, rectangle with the, well, I guess it's a square diamond. If the, you little, will, uh, with the little logo. artistic rendering of an infielder there. It's a quality Pretty set. Cool. How many cards are in that set? There's uh, less than 100? Yeah, I want to say so, yeah. Mari Wills has a rookie card in that set, um, along with some other big name Dodger stars. The, the Brooks Robinson is probably the biggest from that set, right? Well, he was a rookie in 57. As Brooks, I know Sandy Koufax has a card in that set too, mm -hmm. I believe. Don Drysdale's got a card. Bob Gibson. Billy O'Dell has a card. In Billy that set. O'Dell has a card <laughs> in that set. Now, I don't think that Mantle made it in that set though. No. No, I, I, I don't think that he was had a lot of. I don't think that he was licensed to be in that set, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't some, come across them very often. These are just some names that have come off uh, off the top of my head here. Pretty sure that Koufax is in that set. I don't. Remember. I don't remember either. I don't have a back in front of me either. I was using my reference guide. I always dig these guys. The 55 Bowmans. Those are cool. The um, TV, color TV, must have been a really big deal at the time. And it uh, looks like um, Bob Chance is uh, featured there on a console television. Beautiful. Got, he's got the uh, Kansas City Athletics hat on there. You can get out to him. Now, was it 55 Bowman the year that is the only year that, that, that features a Hank Aaron baseball card? Because he was in Tahi Ed contract with Tops. I'm not aware of that. I just am thinking, I'm trying to remember, and I, I know that he, I feel like he has a 55 Bowman. I don't remember any other Bowman year he was ever in. That was just something that came across my mind as we were That's talking about That's a good question. That. I'm not sure so, about that. Cool horizontal um, orientation on that set. Oh, yeah. The console TVs. That's awesome. <laughs> I grew up sitting on the floor on the carpet watching them. It'd be funny if they had a modern set that just had like LCD screens. Yeah, Or right? iPhone screens. <laughs> <laughs> An iPhone, yeah. That'd right. Be cool. I also grabbed, I, you know, this is something that's always available on uh, on eBay that I've never picked up. Just the price is just a little too much. Uh, Bill Fisher. It's a uh, 61 Tops high number that I've been putting off. It's Fisher's only Tiger card. And um, I like to get, even though you can't tell that he's a Tiger in there because it's one of those hat up um oh yes what do you call those up the nose shots yeah the uh the, the 72 <laughs> tops have a lot of up the nose shots where you just see the the bill of the cap and up the guy's nose but uh yeah at least uh, it, they didn't have to do any types of changes artistically on the cap there but um i figured i picked it up for nine bucks which i have never seen one that low priced on the internet you know with shipping and everything so it's good shape too i mean it's got like you know great it is nice hopefully it stays in, in that that nice shape all, all the corners are pretty square after i send it through the mail to what's his Fisher. return rate um he's pretty good i'd say he's in the, the early 90 percentile there wow. getting back um 
again, I just, I've been putting it off for so long. You know, a lot of these guys that, that, that played in the 50s and the early 60s, they're like, you're kind of on a race to, you know, a race against time to getting an autograph because, you know, lifespan is, oh gosh, it's, it, although it's expanding, I mean, nobody lives forever, so it, it's good to try to reach out to the fellas as, 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 you, you know, as soon as you can. And I always feel so bad, you know, when you send to a guy, you know, he's maybe in his, you know, 80s or even older and you get a note back from the wife or something saying that they uh that they no longer sign you know due to decline in health and i get bummed out but it's uh it's always good to know the um the story of what's going on at least you get the mail back a lot of times i'd, I'd prefer that than nothing at all yeah um somebody who i've sent to in the past an ex-tiger um also an ex-dodger who i collect dodgers as well is uh don demeter and this is a um what year are these these Bell data chip cards? I believe that's sixty one Bell brand. Um, I guess it's early sixties, maybe sixty two. Well, let me see the back of this. That one actually has some paper loss, so I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's sixty one. Uh, only because it says Los Angeles Dodgers nineteen sixty home game schedule. Oh, okay. But then again, oh, it, so might it might be, be 60. sixty. Yeah. It might be a sixty. So well, anyway, it is. It is in the early 60s, and these cards are um, scarce, and even more scarce in high grade. Oh yeah. Um, and and you know, t tell me more. But tell us more about why you bought this, Anthony. I bought it just to get it out in the mail. I, I Don Demeter has a very uh, unique signature, and he's a great signer. And um, I. I'm gonna be sending a Tiger card to him, and uh, I needed him on the Dodgers, and I got pretty jealous the last time I came to Frank's with Patrick, and he picked up the Maury Wills from the same. Oh, bell yeah. potato chip. Right. I went home, I scoured the web, and found out that there's not very many available, not to mention for a, a good price like you got. So this guy is going to be sent out, and um, I already got his brother Steve, who played for the Tigers. Nice. And passed away recently, though, unfortunately. But Did he play at the same time that, that Don did? Uh, yeah, they played right around the same time. What's funny about this card, too, is that we were talking about... Um, you know, this card's really hammered. You can tell Anthony will put it up and show you. These corners you know, the are. The corners are just rounded. The edges are destroyed. There's like. Somebody enjoyed it, though, it. because it looks like they taped it to something. There's there's paper loss on all four corners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, it looks like there's some rubbing on the front where some of the gloss is sort of rubbed off. There's like some stain up here in the top, top right quadrant, top left quadrant, rather. So these cards, although they're just destroyed, they have so much personality, right? So. Um, a card like this, you got to wonder what kind of a life it had and where it's been, what it's been through. That's what I like about these old vintage cards is that, um, you know, old vintage cards need love too. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, they, they don't get as much, obviously, as the mint cards, but um, I feel like they have so much more personality because they have these interesting characteristics that you find in these older cards. Um, you got to wonder, like, what it's been through and who's handled it, etc. I, I enjoy them. I pick them up if it's you know a player that I followed or a team that I followed, of course, and I just refer to them refer to them as a rescued cardboard. Yeah. And I like to add them to my collection if they're super super beat. If I wasn't sent, if this card wasn't so rare and I wasn't sending it out for an autograph, this would be a bookmark in, in one of my books or something. I, I I just think that that's fun, especially when you you, you got a book. Everybody saves their books. What do they save them for? <laughs> After you read a book, it's over, right? But then people put them on their bookshelf, and then, you know, me, I'll pick it up five, ten years later, and I open it up, and I go, hey, that was the bookmark that I used. And it'd usually be an old beat-down 85 tops or something. So you're telling me that you don't read a book twice? Sometimes. Yeah. Hardly ever. It's hard enough to uh, to get through a book, <laughs> but to, to read it twice, come on now. That th Those are all the cards that I picked up today. And then I also, just for fun, on, oh, yeah. on our way out, I was telling Patrick that um, I've been trying to uh take over the wife and my our bedroom and make it into a man room and uh i picked up a miguel a miguel cabrera um it's a vertical flag it's really cool for five bucks you can't go wrong i mean come on i want the triple crown winner right over my bed and it's gonna create a nice little buzz in our bedroom hopefully <laughs> That's a great addition, Anthony. And so, how many times do we trade baseball cards? These trading cards don't get traded too often anymore, unless it's for like green paper. That's a good point. Right? Like I can't remember the last time I did a trade with somebody. Right. right. So like I'm a buyer or a seller, but um, it's rare that I'll. I think I did a trade at Frank's, uh, you know, maybe a year ago, but. You know, I mean, it, it's rare that I have a guy, a friend that I'll go through his collection, I'll go through mine, and we'll, we'll do trades like we did in grade school. You know, remember when yeah. we were younger and we'd like, we'd like 
go through each other's binders and then pull out like you know Reggie Jackson or Ryan Sam or Ozzy Smith or whatever and then we'd, we'd like haggle and, and we'd trade like a 1990 Donruss oh, all-star yeah. Ozzy Smith card for like a 1986 tops Reggie Jackson or something <laughs> you know like cards that are meaningful to us as kids but while they don't hold a lot of value um, in the sort of the monetary sense they hold a lot of value in the sort of memory and nostalgic sense so to me those opportunities Although rare now, um, they're still very cherished. When was the last time you cher cher uh, traded, Anthony? Last time I traded, I traded a 1987-88 uh, Hakeem Olajuwon Fleer rookie for two sets of uh, was it 88-89? The first year of NBA hoops cards. 89. Is that what it was? 89. So then Hakeem Olajuwon's rookie was an 86 Fleer, right? That was uh, the same with Jordan. The one, the one and... with the gray. Oh, that was the next year. Then, right? Yeah, so is that 86, 87? 87, 87, 88? You know what's funny? I had a conversation about been... had a conversation about this like dual year uh, numbering system that goes on in the other sports like basketball, where you're like, or even I think hockey does it too, where it's like 94, 95, 95. Right. So I have a hard time looking up my cards because I don't collect these other sports to any really significant degree. So when I'm picking up like a basketball card, I have to go through three different years to figure out what set I have. It, it can be kind of hard for me. So, Anthony, have you experienced difficulty identifying I, certain sets? I'm so those? good with baseball. Yeah. And then when it comes to basketball, I'm always, like, within... Because of that, that, that dual year kind of name on them, I'm always, like, within two years. You are? Every time. Yeah, that's what I feel like... I, I get kind of embarrassed. We were talking to a dealer today about what year a card was, and I was like, kind of... I wasn't too sure. Really? Yeah. Which card was that? Do you remember? Uh, we were talking about the um, the Shaquille O'Neal. I think it was a '99 oh, Bowman my. refractor die cut. It was. Is that what it was? Beautiful. That was the finest. Yeah, that was nice. It was More beautiful. Like Fifteen for it or something. Yeah. So Anthony's doing like a Los Angeles Lakers autograph collection now. Is I it? I just started doing. I want uh, certified on card Laker autos. And if there's some guys I can't get, and I got to get one of those sticker autos, mm -hmm. then you know I'll do it if it's you know. Robert Ori or maybe a Rick Fox or something. We'll see what happens. But I just started it, so hopefully I'll be on there on the on the basketball thread and throwing some uh, some Laker autos up there. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. By the way, you know, I, RadThreads.com is the the forum um, arm of of Radic Cards, and so it's you, you register for profile and it's you get on there and you share. You talk about you know whatever you buy, whatever um, whatever you like, whatever you collect, um, sports wise. So. I encourage you to register, of course, but um, Anthony's really active, or, um, at least he was previously in the uh, autograph baseball thread. He has a lot of autographs, and so, um, you know, what were we talking about? The, we were just tangented like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about, um, like, identifying card years. So in baseball, it's really easy because a lot of times you can just look at the back of the card and see the last year that was recorded for the player's history, and then you move up one year, and that's when the card was released. So... It's usually more easily more easily identifiable. Also, small print on the bottom corners of the cards and the backs can you know, tell you when the card was released too. That's that's really handy. Um, every now and then you'll see a card that that uh, you know says it's released in '95. In fact, it's a '96 thing, or released in '96. In fact, it's a '95 thing. And that's just an example. It could be any set of years, but um, you know, there's some some stuff in the '90s that was hard for me to identify. So. Well, that's really fun, and uh, gosh, what else did we find today that we almost bought? You almost started getting uh, TTMs for basketball cards today with the 60, the 60 oh, set. Oh, man, yeah, I had to hold off, yeah, I had to hold <laughs> off. It was oversized with the 6970 set, yeah, I almost the tall boys. went into a collecting tangent, if you will, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I held off, we, uh, we did good today, I'm not spending too much money. So, we can go broke even faster if we want to. We just like <laughs> spread ourselves really thin by doing multiple projects at one time. I was telling Anthony like if you buy that card, the money you spend on sending that card through the mail and getting autograph is money and time you could be spending to improve your baseball card collection. Right. So it's that's a good way to think about it. Yeah, and that's that's you know me as a Thomas collector, that's why I don't really divert like deviate from my collecting uh, focus too too much. I don't spend a lot of time or money on out stuff that's outside of Frank Thomas. I mean it, when I say a lot, I mean like there's no significant percentage that is in comparison to the amount of time um, <laughs> and financial commitment that I that I you know um, 
commit to to my Frank Thomas collection just because it's something I've been doing for so long. Anthony's been doing TTMs for for a long time and Tigers for a long time. So you know, if we get on some sort of like different road to a different path, it's we kind of like deviate a little bit and we it's can miss out. And then beast, we're like, dude. we're like, can we finance it? Like, do we have enough time to look for stuff like this? So it's it can be kind of like a mind boggle. What I plan on doing someday is hiring an intern to take care of my collecting <laughs> interests. So like. I'll hire somebody to to go on eBay for me and scour the market. <laughs> Give them my checklist and be like, here, find the cards I still need. Someday I'd like to get to a point where I can do that. That'd be nice. And I would ex I would remove myself from that process entirely. Um, that might be kind of cool. But I'll still enjoy That'd going to cool. like, you know, the shops and whatever else. You know, we still got a few shops to hit up here. If you can get in person with a dealer, I love it. I love it. I love dealing with somebody with a face. It's my favorite. And there's haggling. There's always haggling. And I, there's very small haggling. I don't, I don't do too many make on offer on, on eBay. And I don't even... I, I like to haggle in person. It's yeah. It's more fun. Because then you could throw them a really small number with a giant smile on my ugly fuzzy face. And I feel like I get further than just typing in some number. Making an offer on eBay. Yeah, I mean... I mean and we won't go into specifics, but, you know, today I was involved in a, in a potential transaction that didn't pan out very favorably and it, it wasn't because of me but um, sometimes in person um, if someone provides you with an opportunity to buy something from them and you didn't you didn't create that situation yourself so for example if Anthony came to me and said yeah you know make you know why don't you buy me out I'd be like well if the, if the deal makes sense then then you know we can we can discuss a possible transaction or you know have a conversation and he might throw a number out that is, of course, maybe way beyond my ceiling, and then I'll, I'll tell him my ceiling. And then if Anthony gets upset with me, then, you know, it, it's, I have to be like, well, look, you know, I didn't offer this to you. This is just what I'm willing to pay for. There's no harm done there. It's okay um, to, to have a transaction like that and really kind of talk it out. Negotiation should be a back and forth. So on eBay or, or, or other online um, auction sites, when you do place an offer, um, usually you don't have to worry about any sort of like uh, potential confrontation that can come about. Yes, we learned today that a, a, a nice, beautiful smile, such as Patrick has, doesn't always um, <laughs> doesn't always get a nice reaction. Yeah, it, it, it's okay. I mean, they I, might tell you to take a hike, not that nicely, but they might tell, tell you to take a hike. And you know what? Like, I'm not gonna hold it against a guy who wants to hold out and, and get what he expects to get out of out of whatever he's trying to sell. Or, I mean, that's okay. <laughs> like, I just won't be the buyer, and, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, it should be like all fun and games. You know, negotiation should be fun. It should be um, both parties walk away happy, regardless of if the transaction even took place or not. Right. You know, um, no hard feelings. It should be like no worries. Like. You know, Maybe we can meet in metal, maybe we can't. No worries, not a big deal. Um, you know, it's funny, like, something about the in-person transaction Anthony was saying is it, it's, it's, it's a little bit more romance that goes on in the in-person-to-person -person interactions, just like anything else in life that, that you, um, when you have, like, a face-to-face -face interaction, there's just more to it. Whereas, like, a text message, all you get is, like, words displayed on a digital screen. And you don't get the, like, other parts of the... Um, body language you don't get this sort of other interpersonal communication that's so dynamic and important and, and, and robust to the interaction with a person you get you know a tone of voice you get uh, eye movement you get body language you get um, uh, you, you just get a different kind of interaction that's just richer and something that you know submitting a, a, an offer online just can't provide the coldness of the internet sometimes but sometimes depending on who's on the other end of that transaction might be so willing to move the product that you can make a lowball offer let's say and you know um it, it, it can take and if not no worries um you don't want to offend people you want to make sure that you know really what i like to do is is say um you know is such and such too low question mark is does you know does that make sense to you uh, would this be a fair offer and if not, you know, let me know what is. Just kind of like let them know that, that, you know, you're willing to work some kind of deal with them. It oh, yeah. helps. It helps to like build relationships that way. Like, I don't want to offend anybody. Well, we just have to start somewhere. So I may as well just start with a number I might feel would be a low number and we can just kind of work our way into something. Um, but Anthony, you want to tell us a little bit about anything that you might have experienced previously? Maybe a story about that? 
Well, it's always funny too because if I buy something from somebody on eBay and uh, or, or wherever on the secondary market, it, it's always just so. Uh, you know, a term my grandmother always used. It's always such a a milk toast experience. There's it's it's very bland, and then it's over. Whereas if you go into a store, you might want to return to that store because just the guy who worked there was so cool. And even if they don't have all the product that you love, you might show up and just buy a couple packs here and there because you enjoy the interaction. Or you might just show up just for for just to BS with somebody, just to have some great conversation, which is actually how I met Patrick. It was just uh, showing up to a storefront and just talking forever. I remember and that. We'd, yakking and yakking. We'd go on and on. It's funny, like, like sometimes I just come down here. I've come down here before and not bought anything, you know, and just to talk to some of the guys I know that sell here that are, you know, I'm getting to know people or I'm, like, building rapport with people. I just like talking with them. I just like talking about cards, talking about, you know, a little bit of sports who's doing what, why the market's where it is, what's, you know, what's selling, how much things are going for. I just like to sort of like have conversations about this with me because it's interesting to me. And, you know, I was, I was working in a shop a couple of years ago and, and Anthony comes in the store and, and, um, and we started talking and I, he knew a lot about something I didn't know about. And I, I apparently had some education on, on some, some things that he was unaware of. So we were like trading information. You know, he would educate me on vintage tigers and Alan Trammell and and, <laughs> and and really knowledge I was never even aware of in some baseball players and why there's a smudge on Alan Trammell's rookie card, like a print smudge that's very commonly found. I didn't even notice that. Um, you remember that conversation we had? Oh, yeah. And then I would tell him about like 90s inserts and like why are certain artist proofs are hard to find um, and, you know, why certain cards are, are scarcer than others, why retail is harder than hobby inserts, you know, what kind of lifespans they have, etc. So, um, you know, these kinds of interactions, at least for me, are, are, are very valuable and help me become smarter in the hobby. And I think that maybe Anthony, too, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then if you do get in a confrontation, it's always fun to uh, to trade um, expletives in person rather than over the Internet, as I've found in the past. Yeah? <laughs> oh, jeez. I try not to get into any, like, tiffs with anybody. I can't help other people's reactions. I can only help my own. So, I, you know, at the end of the day, just try to be the nicer guy. Um, and smile and just, you know, do what you can to say, like, no hard feelings. Like, still be friends. Don't have to make this deal if it doesn't work for either of us. You're definitely the gentleman buyer. Thank you. Yeah, you Thank you. I always believe that, you know, like, both parties should be satisfied and walk away happy, regardless of what happens. There's no reason to get upset. So. The baseball cards, dude. It should be fun, always. It should be fun. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it, should, it should never be stressful. So, anything else you want to you wanna share with us, Anthony? I'm pretty shared out. Pretty shared out. <laughs> nice. Thank you again for watching uh, another episode of Radicards TV. Till next time, enjoy collecting.